the latest episode of The Ugly Truth. Paula and I are talking about the season finale of our favorite show, Alone. And we're also talking about different therapies. Everybody's going a little nuts right now. And we found some very unusual, unique therapies. A lot of them may require nudity. It's up to you. Listen and figure it out. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Ugly Truth. It's episode four ninety. Are you on <laughs> drugs? Well, first of all, it's about two hours earlier in the morning than we normally record, so I'm I'm just I just finished a big, huge ass cup of coffee because, um, as you a lot of people know, California's on fire. Mm-hmm. And again, as usual, it's like we call it fire season now. Yeah, but it's like like a hundred times worse right now. It's been snowing ash for like oh, three yeah. days. Yeah, no, yeah, about yeah, it was about three days ago. We went outside and I'm like, what what, what is this? And I thought maybe like because we have an ashtray in the backyard and I thought oh. maybe like it, it got blown over or something <laughs> right. like that. But I'm like, that doesn't make any sense because I'm like, this stuff is everywhere. Yeah. And then, of course, it made me think of... I mean, this is hardly the case, but <laughs> mom told us the story about, I think, what was it, like Mount Lassen or something? Like oh, Mount St. Helens. Yeah, it like, it blew or something. Yes, and it then, did. you know, it, it rained ash for it a while. And it was cloudy and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And so I'm just like, this, this must be like that, but not really. And so. Actually, I was a very little girl when that happened. And there were, there was ash falling in the valley and people were collecting it and like they have it as a memento of that horrific explosion of the volcano where people died but they have their bottle of ash from when orders it fell. <laughs> yeah, god okay i have so much i want to tell you um today we're going to be talking about therapy by the way because everybody oh, needs it paula i have to tell you all of my podcasts that i listen to you know they're predominantly stand-up comedians and they're kind of in a niche on their own because all the comedy clubs are closed mm-hmm. they're losing their shit like they oh, are yeah. done they are fried it's like we're broken and we don't, you know, they don't, a lot of them do therapy, but it's not, it's not helping. And I think you would agree that we're all kind of losing it a little bit, right? This is, it, it's been a rough year for most of us. Anyway, so what we're going to be talking, that's, that's what we're talking about today. But before we get to that, I was watching, I watched the season finale of Alone this morning, which, which is why I was a little late. I watched it last night. <gasps> so we could talk about it? Yes. Did you were you disappointed Callie got pulled with her frostbit frostbitten feet? Okay, I have some thoughts, but you know we can talk about it when we're ready. So, well, we can talk about it now. I, I, here's the thing: no one was beating Roland. That dude could have stayed out there for a year, in my opinion. You know, Victor has some questions about his uh, his psychosis because oh well, Paula, <laughs> he thought he was losing it. He's just like you know, he's like I'm like I'm like. Well, I was in the kitchen doing something at the sink and I said to myself, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with that guy? And then oh, yeah. Victor was on the couch and then he looked at me and he's like, what the fuck's wrong with that guy? <laughs> and I'm First like, did all, you not just hear what I said? And then, I, cause I'm just like, I think that guy's losing it. Well, I think people do. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, my whole thing about the lady. Okay. For, for starters, I'm just like, could you please stop saying the word? the f word oh i know I mean, she kept saying it i'm like stop it i'm just <laughs> wasn't like, it like Jesus. a little it's like a needle in your neck right <laughs> well she just kept saying it and then she like she's got this really big like wide smile yep. talk thing and she's yes. just like fee, fee, fee. i'm like stop <laughs> you know it's like fee, fi, fo, fum. i'm like stop saying it the way you're saying it. and of course i'm just like you know i'm i know we're the only one that take issue with it you know yes. and so Everyone else is just like, what, what's wrong with What's you? wrong with what saying the F word? <laughs> it's just they're, they're like, what's the F word? And it's just like nothing. It's the bottom, you know. the bottom of your ankle, that area. <laughs> Anyways. So here's the thing that bothered me is, I, and I just said this to Victor. I'm like, cause at first I'm just like, well, how did they even know that she had it other than she just kept talking about it? Well, no, they have, they do med checks constantly. Well, then I don't know if you caught, she notified them that she had it. Well, they said they were aware of it, but they do met. We don't know how frequently they check on them, but my guess is it's weekly once they get past a certain time period because they're they are losing fat so quickly that a person can turn in days like you can go from 
feeling just fine to suddenly struggling with starvation. Your body is just starting to right. go into organ failure. But I think so, they're not, I don't think they do like actual, like, I think they trust them to say, let them know, like if there's something wrong. Well, so I think she I, yeah. said that she I had think she radio, told them. Yeah. She's, they showed her radio again, just saying, just to let you guys know, I have noticed a little bit of frostbite on um, blah, blah, blah. And I told oh. Victor, I'm just like, I'm all, if it had been me, I'm like, when the show was over, I'm all, they could have taken off my boots and I would have had, I wouldn't have even had any fucking feet at all. And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> where did they go? I don't know. You know, <laughs> little black nubs. Cause she's just like, you know, you can't really mess with your health. And I'm like, after a million dollars, you could buy yourself a brand new toe. I'm just That's like, true. you know, I'm just like, what, what's, what's the fear there? I'm just well, like, I mean, the only thing I can think of for her, first of all, just to put it out there, you and I kind of disagree. I thought this was one of the better seasons I've seen. I would put it up with there with season six in season three but uh i didn't have a problem with the contestants like you did i thought they were so highly skilled it was really fascinating i was gunning for kaylin uh, she won me over eventually but she just couldn't she just couldn't do it mentally she was like I've, I've d- i'm done and so i respect it i really wanted callie to win with her frostbite <laughs> i so did i was like please tell me there's a twist because roland is unbeatable and he was, he was unbeatable, but it, I really did like her. I, I know she was a super duper hippie and I appreciate that she was like, okay, well, you know, because the thing is, is when this is over, she does live, uh, what is the word? She does, she lives in a van. She, she goes yeah, to, they, they live off the land, you know? Yeah. So to have no toes is probably problematic <laughs> regardless of whether she wins or not. So well, and I, then yeah, I mean, I get that, but yeah. I'm just like, if you have a million dollars, I mean, mm-hmm. and it's not like she, I mean, she said she did get treated and everything like yeah. that. So, I mean, it, it was a temporary problem. And so now, I will say that because we were recording this morning, I did not watch the post interview stuff. So you're telling me stuff that I did not know, which is nice. Oh, no, okay. it's not a spoiler. I mean, I'm glad you're telling me because well, she I'm not, said she said yeah. the rehabilitation took months. And I'm just <gasps> like, how much fucking rehabilitation can you do you need for a Oh, she's well, like she's like, I was wearing bandages for months and I'm just like, yeah, fuck a deal. I'm just like, <laughs> it's a toe. You know, well, she did have it on multiple toes. It wasn't just the one. It, well, she ended then, up having it on her left as well. OK, the, well, and then what one scene she was doing something in the fire. I'm like, oh, I'm like, her whole hand is frostbitten. And then Victor's like, no, he's like, it's just dirty. And I'm just like, oh, I could filthy. not. I'm like, no, I'm like, I would have boiled some water and like, you know, rinsed myself or something i'm like there's well, no way yeah. i could walk around with just like you know black hands from well, just dirt i mean kaylin was was clean as a whistle i mean she had she i mean her hands were kind of chawed from just work but she was yeah. not a dirty human other than the fact that we were exposed to her hairy pits which i get it but why do we have to see it you know, well, you know i would have been I, clipping that shit with my I, tweezers well, here's the other thing too though is it's like when she did that well god she had really big biceps by the way well, but Paula, anyways, she's an olympia she was an olympic level swimmer i mean oh okay the, oh yeah she she I was to miss that part yeah that was a few episodes in she was like i was a, a gymnast at the olympic level she she wasn't on the olympic team but then she broke her back and so when mm. she was done she had to do water therapy and she ended up being a, pro, a profoundly talented swimmer so, so she ended up extraordinarily athletic person. yeah so she did backstroke and actually made the olympic team for canada she was top 10 and so i'm like oh well mad respect because that's why she's not giving up because that mental shit is like ingrained right. in those athletes so she, but that's that, why she looks so good physically she's and she was a lot taller than i think i realized so the whole armpit thing though yeah. i was watching that and i'm just like you know to be perfectly honest i'm like my armpit hair would never even grow that long i mean ever it's just, never you know my stubble it's it's stubble but beyond that like i don't i don't know that it could grow like a tuft i just paula <laughs> my armpits would look like a 15 year old boy's beard it'd be like smatterings like, of, i haven't of hair. shaved my legs <laughs> in like a while now and i still mm. go out in public because no one you would know unless them. they got like you know unless they tripped and fell in front of my legs and i looked over and they're like good god you know but i mean <laughs> they'd have yeah. to be within like two inches yeah you know and, so and with fine. decent eyesight so true, true well anyway i mean were you happy with the results um, I mean, actually, no, because at the end, 
you know, he's like had come to Jesus with the fact that he needed to spend more time. And then yes. when they interviewed him, he's just like, well, I think I'm going to take a year off and, and go on a trick by myself. I'm like, well, so much <laughs> for your fucking family. So much for your dad that you love so bad. Yeah. And your sister and you wanted to reconnect. And, you know, you were so busy. You didn't even go to your mom's funeral, you asshole. <gasps> God, and so I know. he's a broken person. I don't know. I, you know, he was really honest about it, though, that he's like, look, I don't have a lot of friends. And whenever I'm even with someone, I'm not. You know, he's clearly has some disassociative issues, but he embraces it and it is who he is. I mean, he reminded me I was uh, there's a alone Reddit uh, subreddit and I I love it because mm-hmm. everybody's everybody. They're either, you know, outdoor survive, you know, they're outdoor experienced people who are constantly dissing on other people who comment who don't know shit about it. It's just a really good but it's a good forum. And um they were saying, uh, who does he remind you of? He reminds me of somebody. I'm like, oh, he reminds me of the two uh, guys in um, the in Dances with Wolves. No, no, no. Jeremiah Johnson and uh, the, the Adventures of Grizzly Adams. Those two shows. Uh, one's a movie, mm-hmm. one's a show. There's always that one guy. It's like uh, Cat- Bear Man Jack or something where there mm-hmm. are these solitude dudes who all they do is live on their own. They're a little nuts. They have like they wear bear claw necklaces, <laughs> you know, they they're they're one with nature and they're very solitary and yeah. that's just who they are. And that's who he is. He definitely was born in the wrong time. He should have been born in the 15 or no 1800s and lived off the land because he would have been very successful and no well, one and- thought a thing of it. He did kind of allude to the fact that his needs were extraordinarily simple. You know, mm-hmm. he's just like, I've got food. I've got shelter. I've got firewood. I've got, you know, what else do you need? Oh. He's like, I've got my pipe and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a pretty happy dude. And I'm just like, well, I yeah. guess if that's all you want out of life, then yeah, well, sure. Some people, so. are, yeah, we, we think we're, our needs are simple. And then you see someone like that where it's just primitive needs is all they want. And they're just really happy to be outside and just living. I think that's great. Still don't want to go camping. And their shelters were not tents, so they had some, you know, protection. But so, even I mean, then, I mean, they were going fucking icicles in their shelters. And then the oh, other Paula, thing is, it is about frigid. the lady with the frostbite, she had on freaking, like, Ugg boots. And I'm just like, yeah. why aren't you wearing, like, the Gore-Tec? Like, that's the other thing I told Victor is I'm like, I don't know, like, going into this thing. I mean, I'm sure nobody was really, like, rich or anything like that. But I would have been investing in, like, the top of the line. Like, whoever climbs, like, freaking Mount Everest, whatever shit they buy, <laughs> that's what I would have been buying. Yeah. Well, you know? actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, some of them go out looking for sponsors. And they wear all sponsored gear. So it's like if you go to someone where they're, you know, specialize in Arctic below zero gear, if you get all get it, you know, people will go, what hat are they wearing or what what sweater is that? And then people will go and look for it. I mean, this is so lucrative if you're an outdoors person, you know? Yeah, but I mean, you better not be the one person that like quits after, you know, day four or something. Well, that's true. <laughs> but that's you know true. what I love too is they have Brit doing uh, uh, Jeep commercials now. I saw I, that. I loved him. He I, was funny. Brit was the best. And I loved how much he loved his little family. And he's like, I can't wait to go home and teach my son how to do this. Or I can't wait to tell him what I saw. And it's like, oh my God, that's so great. Well, I, I just, just liked him because he had just the funniest person. Like he had like one of those dry oh, sense of humors. He was so. hilarious. <laughs> like remember when he killed the mouse and he put it on a stick and he's like, hi i'm mr mouse and it's like he was losing it a little bit (laughs) it was really funny but anyway so as far as season seven um i really enjoyed the skills that they all had i was not surprised that roland uh finished out the hundred days i was once again now i'm with you i am very disappointed i would love to see a woman make it to the end um they are capable no doubt but i mean a little physically a little more fragile than men and i think that's the challenge so uh, I don't know. yeah, I guess I I just um... I think Callie could have made it personally. I think she could have made it if she hadn't gotten frostbite, and I'm sure it was a clothing choice that caused it, like the wrong boot or something like that, and that sucks. Well, really and sucks. you know the thing is, is she had been. Here's the other thing too: is she's so. De- it sounded like her and that partner did everything together. And yeah. I just don't know. She was just so dependent on that partner that she just. She missed. I don't think she wanted to allude to the fact how much she missed being back with that person. Wait, do you mean she, wait? Do you mean Kaylin the swimmer or Callie the hippie? 
the hippie. Oh, oh, she did say something about her sweetheart. You're right, you're right. Yeah, because they had been together and they literally did like everything. Everything. Like all their little excursions and yes. leaf collecting and, you know, whatever else Foraging. they did. Mm-hmm. And so she's, well, and then she's the one, she's like, I miss physical touch. And I'm just like, oh, gross. Oh, no, that's Kaylin. That was Kaylin and her husband. Okay, well, whoever they, they both kind of reminded me of each other after a while. Well, and, yeah. And so I'm just, they're just like, I miss physical touch. I'm like, that's nasty. I miss and kissing. So, I'm like, oh, God. I was just like, stop <laughs> it. And I'm just like. Yes. But I told the kids last night, I'm like, you know, the only way I could think that maybe would be a successful way to do this is like if you were a single person. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what if you like went all out and like you gave notice on your apartment, you quit your job, like you moved uh, all your stuff into storage and right. like you le- legitimately like had nothing like, to come home to. Yeah, because you're just like, this is my new home. This is where I live. It's and a mental, I I think you're right, mental preparation for sure. I think that's why Callie lasted so long. Well, because a lot of people made it seem like, well, because she didn't really have a home. Nope. And so a lot of people made it seem like they keep thinking like, oh, you know, curling up in front of the fireplace under a blanket and watching a movie and blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like they were thinking of home. But I'm like, if right. you don't have a home to go back to, then you don't really have anything to miss. So That's true, except for her, except for your people. Yeah. Um, but And Callie, who was the one living kind of up higher on the hill, and she was the one that was appreciative for all the food and had the sick porcupine and all that stuff. I can't uh, believe she ate that thing. Well, you know, <laughs> there's a couple things that have changed since I've been watching Alone. First of all, I totally want to play Alone. Um, Daryl is pulling out the fire pit so I can learn how to start a fire with a flint because I've never done it. Okay. And I can't wait. And the only thing is he's vetoed the bow and arrow. But you know I'm not going to let him tell me what to do. I'm going to get my bow and arrow at some point. But he I, even, I, I had no desire. The fish even sent me links. Enough. He's like, honey, why don't you just go to an archery place where they, you know, can teach you how to do it so you don't hurt anyone or yourself? Because you told you're, me that you're gonna it's not skin easy. the inside of your arm yeah. once and you're gonna be like, I'm done. <laughs> So he sent me a couple of links. He goes, look, there's these places. And I was looking. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, here's the thing. You have to buy your own bow and arrow. They don't give you rentals. You still have to buy it. So he's like, yeah, oh, you're not going to be like the, to kill a mockingbird or whatever that chick is from <laughs> the Hunger Games or I don't oh, know what her name is. I, I hate those movies. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to season eight. From what I understand, I was looking because what I would love to do is I would love for you and I to do a weekly podcast on the loan. I think it'd be so fun to do a recap show. I, I, I want to see an all star show. Oh, I wonder if they're yeah. going to do that yet. Well, an all star like all the winners. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to see Jordan and Roland go head to head to see who could survive off the land the longest? Who's Jordan? The guy that hatcheted the Wolverine. The one that killed the moose and and was oh, living. Oh, yeah. The moose. That would he be was good. Badass. He's like, I ki- he told his wife when he was he's like, Mom, I killed a Wolverine with a hatchet because he like flung it and it hit yeah, him. That's true. Oh, God, and of course, so you know, there'd be Sam out there like, I'm starving. He's like, gross. <laughs> <laughs> but he lasts. That's I freaking thing. love Sam. Well, I know. He, he puts on the right amount of weight to be chubby and still able to, you know, he's agile and he's really smart. And he so, is. He is smart. Yeah. Well, and, and Fowler, he's just, too. He's, oh. he's got really good spirits. And so. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'd love to see it. You're right. I just wonder if they, they need to give him a little bit of a rest. Plus, they need really 10 contestants. They need 10. And I don't want those fucking brothers to participate. <laughs> No, <laughs> that was a dumb season. I was not. It was funny. People's when before I had watched the season, season four, and everybody's like, oh, it's the best. And you were like, the partner one? Why? Yeah, I and couldn't then, believe they voted that one the best. I'm like, and how? I know. And then I watched it. I'm like, this was brutal to watch. It was hard. I fast forwarded through so many episodes to get to the end because I just did not care anymore. I'm like, you guys well, are I a bunch mean, of whiny bitches. Didn't the partner one only last like 21 days anyway? I mean, it yeah, because they couldn't take long. it. They're all, we're starving. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not saying it would be easy for me. I would have, I would never would have even signed up for it. But I think the hiking to their partner was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Hated it. Okay. So alone, I loved it. No surprises, really. I think we all saw Roland winning and on day one. At least I did on day one. Although, Did they, <laughs> did they ever say what would have happened if two people had made it no. to the days? No. I, I was under the assumption they would have to split the money. 
there's been a lot of discussion about it, but they, you know, but there's no real definitive answer. My guess is they would have to split the winnings, but that would be really disappointing. Well, maybe they didn't think, you know, necessarily anyone was going to make it. Right. And then the other thing, I mean, it kind of reminds me of um, a long time ago in media, they used to do these golf tournaments where every Mm -hmm. hole was sponsored by a company. And if you got a hole in one on that hole, you would win like some really big ass prize. And like hole 19 or 18, the final hole, if you got a hole in one on that, you won a million bucks. And the way behind the scenes, the way it would work is they took out an insurance policy. And if someone did happen to get a hole in one, the insurance would pay out the million and you would just pay like a quote unquote deductible. Right. And no one's ever, no one ever got it. So my guess is they're like the likelihood of more than one person getting to a hundred days is like, you know, really slim. I mean, no one's even made it to a hundred days. Like Roland could have tapped at 90 and not won the million and then nobody would have won. So the fact that he did it was probably like, okay, well, there's his million bucks. But I don't, the idea of two making it, I think they probably were taking out insurance policies. Well, the only thing I could think of is is that they were just going to make him keep going to like a last man standing. Oh, God, that would have been brutally unfair. I I mean, God, that would have just been crazy. But yeah. Having temperatures like 32 degrees below, I'm like, I don't even think I could conceptualize what kind of cold that is. I don't think we can. I mean, he said that when the wind would hit your face, it was like knives. It it just, I can't fathom it. I would go into a walk in at round table and be like, it's free. To get here well and that's <laughs> so i can't I imagine said that too i'm just like you know i'm like i couldn't do the cold i said i can't no. stand being cold i'm like i become I'm, I'm like i shut down like a robot i'm just oh, yeah. like I, I i'm like yeah. like done they just find me dead and cold in my little shelter and i'm like <laughs> I, I need i need coffee i can't i can't move i know it's true it's it's true. I mean, I just admire these people's skills so much. And I just love couch potato watching and having my, you know, the the uh, the play by play in my brain going, that's a dumb idea. You know, when I have literally no idea what I'm talking about. It's the funnest indulgence ever. Well, but I mean, show. I hate people who think that, you know, you have to be an expert or in the field to have an opinion. There's just like the same MMA people that do that. They're oh, just yeah. like, well, they're like, well, until you've been a reading and taking a punch in the face i'm like oh i said but you know when you watch football you've been an nfl player yeah. or a baseball player or <laughs> exactly. a basketball player like, i have eyes i can figure it out after a while i watch I'm, so much alone now i know the patterns are so clear human human patterns yeah. it's so clear now when you watch it how things are going to go down you can almost determine who's going to be in the top three by, right. the, by the first day, which is great. I love it. It's the same thing you and I do with pageants. We love watching the pageants. We know shit about it other mm-hmm. than just sitting there. Well, we could judge the shit out of those. You know we could. I don't know. It's getting harder, though, because, I mean, well, well, a lot of things anymore, they're like, it's not based on the typical talents and stuff. Now it's based on, you know, like who they think they should pick, not based on, yeah. like, you know, what what's actually really the best. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's true. Oh, all right. Anyway, uh, so given uh, all of that, and you know, it is therapy for a lot of those people that go through that. They really resolve a lot of shit. Roland, although has already rehardened himself, he was really humbled the day he won. Like he had his face was relaxed. You know, his eyes were a little open. You know, he was like at peace with his mother's death. He was very regretful of how shitty of a person he is. Of course, that all went away the second he got a belly full of food, it sounds. But initially it looked like he had learned some lessons about how hard it was to do what he thought he loved to do. What I thought was kind of cute is he's this, you know, the whole time I've been here, I've been referring to this as we, (gasps) and he says, now I realize he's like, it's been me and my mom. And I was, I got kind of like not choked up, but I was just like, I was like, Oh, I thought that was really sweet. He goes, it was mother. And I'm like, Oh, that's very psycho. Like, but maybe he called her mother, you know, in their life. Well, it just was like, you know, Maybe when they refer to her, they refer to her as mother. Yes. And so. <laughs> just reminded me just, of Norman Bates. I'm like, oh, God. It was mother. <laughs> <laughs> so. Not even hurt this fly. <laughs> so, so freaky. I know. Anyway. Well, I mean, he wasn't a normal. I mean, well, he was from Arkansas, for fuck's sake. I mean, come on. No, uh, Alaska. No, he, he was born and raised in Pencil- rural Pennsylvania. And then he fled to Alaska. Apparently, someone wrote a book about him. I'm I haven't done much research because I didn't want to be spoiled by any potential, you know, 
uh, news or anything. So now I'm going to look it up and see what the book's about. They're like, yeah, he's not right. (laughs) That boy's not right. It's probably a true crime. (laughs) It's like there's a reason he hides in Alaska. Yeah, right. Um, Okay, so you and I had been talking about how we kind of want to just get away from the serious shit of our life and talk about some, you know, go back to the way we were. Initially, we were talking about really crazy crap we found on the internet. And the one thing that you and I and you specifically said is like, there are so many fucking weird therapies now. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, you're right. And so I thought... This is a really good timely subject because everyone's going a little crazy and not everyone's really into talk therapy or popping an antidepressant. So maybe mm-hmm. some of these ideas might work for you if you're a little wrong. Um, I found one that was, re- first of all, before we get into the ones we found that are new and or just un- weird, cuddle therapy is still a thing. I did see that, but it's morphed. Now they're going to people's homes. I did, did you not see, see that? that. No, I did not. Okay, so the one that we originally looked at, they don't lease an, uh, a location anymore. Now they're like independent contractors. Okay. And they're going to people's houses for Even the, today? The cuddles, I guess. That's what I had read. Wow. Because I think that it wasn't as popular as they thought it was going to be. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> what? And so the overhead of like hiring the cuddlers, having the location to like, you know, upkeep like a lease, the lights, you know, and everything like that. It was just too much. So now they just work as independent contractors. And so someone will contact them and be like, well, I need a hug. And you're like, "Okay, I'm on my way. And, you know, so then they, you know, go and, you know, they've got their their list basically of, you know, what they do, what they do and don't do. And um they choose from there and they, you know, just go for however long they either agreed or the person wants to go beyond or I don't know. And so I uh, found one. There is one in Sacramento. The cuddle and, therapy. Yes. And it is <clears throat> still it, they call it, you know, the cuddle therapy. But what was weird about it is that it's not just you know, one-on-one cuddling. I didn't know about coming into someone's home to do it, but they have, (laughs) they have like, you know, right now they're really uh, taking advantage of the coronavirus. Um, And so they're like, you know, are you freaking out? You know, give us a call and we'll we'll work with you, whatever. Um, But now they have, okay, first of all, it's $80 an hour to get a signature cuddle. Mm -hmm. And those last an hour where they can talk, lay in silence, watch a movie, snuggle up and play a board game. Uh, there's a quickie, which is the lunch break cuddle, which is 45 minutes for 50 bucks where the you can quickie, vent- really well, they I called it that it's the lunch break cuddle where you oh, can okay. vent about your job. And then the interactive cuddle where if you don't want to meet in person, uh, they don't have pricing on it, but you can do a zoom with a cuddler where they will talk to you and give you consolation. This kind of sounds just like a rent a person. It. It is. And then there's a couple's cuddle, which I would never do in a million years. Okay, now this is pushing boundaries. Uh, Wait till I tell you the big one. You can have a cuddle party, a three-hour experience where participants engage in communication exercises, non-sexual touch, personal exploration, intimacy, in a safe space. And it's like the picture is like 10 people cuddling in a group. And I'm like, that that is disgusting. That is, Paula, in a million years, I mean. In a million years, I would Who never. Who does that? What do they do? Well, oh, does I... everybody drop their keys in a bowl when they get there? They're calling it the workshop. And I'm like, the workshop? can you imagine going and saying, okay, team, we're going to the cuddle sex. You know, we're going to the cuddle people and we're going to do these workshops. And then you go, it's like, all right, everybody remove your shoes and socks. <laughs> of, co- of course. It's on one of those. giant bed of pillows. Like... Well, it, like, reminds me, <laughs> it reminds me of that movie where she's like, all right, everybody, take off your panties, get your mirrors and look at your vagina. And she's like, I'm not going to do that. She's like, I'm wearing a girdle. <laughs> Can you imagine walking into a workshop with people that you're not married to and just walking in and going, all right, everybody, assume a position on the pillows. Here we go. And I'm like, I am not cuddling with Stan for a million dollars. And he's it's not there, happening. You know, legs spread and he's got a big smile on his face. I'd be like, no. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I'm like, no. No. I, it does, well, I'd look at my person and I'd be like, did you actually think I was going to do this? <laughs> did you think this was something that I would participate in? I mean, first of all, no. Especially, why would you? I don't even have multiple friends where I would want to do this. Like, no. There's no one. No. I wouldn't even do it with you guys. 
like ever. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> I agree. So, anyway, cuddle therapy still exists. Uh, you and I had a, a brief chat a couple of days ago about how you want to assign a covert operation person to your daughter as she grows older so she stays out of trouble. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's a it's like rent a friend and <laughs> they legitimately become their friend. I don't I would sign a non disclosure agreement where it basically says like I don't get privy to any of like personal information or discussions or things like that, but this person does agree to keep her safe and you know, like bar situations, make sure she doesn't like, you know, drink unattended drinks or gets drinks from, you know, guys that ordered them at the bar and brought them to her or, you know, she doesn't go home with someone or get followed or, I just assume, I just, I assume it's because you're concerned that she will not take your advice and your training to heart. And so you need someone to kind of run interference. Jamie, we can't even get her to remember to give the dogs water on a daily basis. (laughs) So, Yeah. I can I understand it's a, it's a concern trust me Mackenzie was a big concern as well. I mean, it was not it was not a pleasant experience watching her grow up. I mean, we didn't buy her a bike because she kept telling us she was going to ride her bike to the airport. And uh, <laughs> we believed her. Where and was so she going to go? We didn't know, but it didn't matter. So we never bought her a bike. She was the only one that never got a bike because we knew that she would do it. And uh She finally bought a bike this year and, you know, as expected, she's riding further than she should, you know, and she's a grown ass woman. Well, she's got a car. Steph, Paula, (laughs) I'm just telling you, I, I'm not saying that your idea is a bad, a a bad one. Uh, If you can find a way to do it by all means, because it's, it's frightening when you have a child who has no fear. It really yeah. is. It's really frightening. Okay, tell me some of the unusual therapies. I'm curious. Which one Which one did you find that was really odd? Okay, And so, I hope it's not the one I did, because I will be so surprised. Okay, so, I mean, this is not new. In fact, they talked about it on the Big Bang Theory. It's this oh. float therapy, where oh, yeah. basically you get in this, like, big clamshell, and there's water in there, mm-hmm. and then you close the lid, but you're, like, surrounded by, like, neon blue coloring, and yes. you just lay there and it's it's a obviously it's a uh, salt based water so yeah. so you, you, you don't sink or anything and you just mm-hmm. lay in there and you float and i don't know if they play sounds or music or meditations meditation meditation type sounds and you're in there for like a half an hour or sometimes even an hour mm-hmm. and you're just like alone with your thoughts floating around in this thing <laughs> and Little a lot of people said it's supposed to be very relaxing Mm. I personally would, I would not find that relaxing. I mean, (laughs) well, then I've read some things. People are like, you know, I'm really claustrophobic. Do I have to close the lid? And they're just like, you know, we leave the lid up to you. Like how much or how little you want to close it. So I'm just like, I don't know. And then I was thinking, I'm like, well, how the fuck do they clean this thing? Because I'm like, I'm not getting in somebody else's water. And um, and they said that they have a very high level of, filtration system and i'm like okay so it's the same fucking water they just like filter out and i'm just like well does your filtration system you know filter out pubes and stuff like that because yeah because some people go in naked oh god i could not lay in someone else's ass water i just well, not only that but it i mean if you're nude i mean it's salt water ever gotten you ever ever gotten salt water in your bathing suit at the ocean <laughs> it's not it's pleasant just, it's just gross so yeah I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people are into it. They I, are. I know people I'm too who much, do it. I'm too much of a control freak to let yes. someone well, just I mean, float around and that's, let anything happen. I think for, for, for us, that's probably the biggest thing that causes us not to do these alternative therapies because you have to relinquish control physically. And I am not a fan. I had a deep tissue massage once and mm-hmm. it was like torture for me. And the lady's like, you really need to relax. And I'm like, I'm doing my best. I'm like, and, you, you know, know, you really need to stop telling me that because I'm getting <laughs> It's angry. just making it worse, <laughs> you know. So finally, I was. she did the best she could. I'm sure I was just the worst client ever. I've never gone. I've never had another one. 
Um, I'm massage. just not, no, yeah. I hate them. I hate them. I even hate going to the esthetician to have a facial because the idea of just laying there and letting someone work on my face is like, just rip my skin off. It just is uh-huh. so not relaxing for me. Um, but it's because I'm very guarded by physically. I just don't like to be touched. And so it's very difficult to enjoy. Oh, you have to go to the spa. You have to do this or that. I'm like, I don't have to do anything. I'll just be uptight my whole life. It's okay. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, it's not that I'm stressed out. I'm just wound up like a, you know, I don't know. (laughs) But anyways, okay, so the next one I found, it's called Soma Dome. Have you heard of that? I have not. Okay, so it's like the pod. (laughs) The pod. Um... (laughs) You lay in there and you've got headphones, but this, it's it's a it's dry. You don't have to get wet. Okay. And it's a dome, and they shine different colors in there. Okay. For you, like light therapy or something like that. Oh. But then they also play like what do they call these? Uh, by 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 binaural beats. Okay. So they're not like they're not really like music. It's just like low frequency tones Interesting. and it's, it's supposed to like support like people who like to meditate. And so this is just supposed to enhance a meditation experience. Okay. So you go in preparing to meditate and then they, but they're adding elements of stuff to make it more enhanced. I don't know, but okay. I mean, I've never How meditated much is that? before. Uh, you know, I don't know. I I didn't really look at the pricing, but I mean, it just shows this lady laying and and everything's like neon, but it looks like Miami Vice. And so that's what I'm saying. Everything's neon blue. It's in (laughs) these rooms that, you know, look Mm -hmm. like a Galatian palace with like this giant (laughs) bathtub. But then in the corner, you've got this like neon blue, like egg pod thing that you'd look like you'd probably find out like a Google break room. And (laughs) they're, oh, I'm sure they have those at Facebook and Google. And so don't forget to get into your neodome and get your your chakras in line before you start plugging away on that coating. Yeah. So I Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I was just like, well, these are not things I could ever do. And so I I don't know. Just weird, weird therapy stuff. Uh, Okay, let me tell you mine. This one, if you got this one, I'll be so surprised. I found serpent therapy. God, (laughs) I know how much you love snakes. Well, what's the therapy involved in that? Unless it's, you know, getting one and having it bite my neck and kill me. Serpent therapy is when you, instead of hands, snakes massage you on your skin. So basically, (laughs) this woman named Serpentessa places snakes, they're boa constrictors, and she places them on your body, naked body, and they writhe on you. And that is the massage. And uh, it's very expensive. Um, For one and a half hours, it's $300. Is this supposed to be like a sexual experience? It is not a sexual experience. I'm looking at the photos. I mean, it's erotic looking. But then she says, but for $535, you can do a parent child with a back to back snake massage session for two and a half hours. Wait, with your kid? Yes. When I saw that, I went, no, there's a picture. So part of it is the thrill factor that my clients want to have a snake laying on them. There's a picture of a girl with two bow constrictors on her face. Um, It says uh, that not only do the serpents elicit emotional stress relief, but blood flow is increased to tense areas and the gliding weight of the snake's body relieves pressure throughout the person's body. I have to say that. First of all, my issue with this, um, they show couples holding hands together in the lotus position with snakes around their necks. Um, Snakes have a bacteria on them. Mm -hmm. So when you handle them, you have to like de like you have to like do like germ like Like a contamination or hand sanitizer level cleaning when you when you handle reptiles, because if you don't, you can get sick. So the I don't care. I don't know how clean. I mean, these poor snakes, I. 
first of all, it seems cruel to make snakes lay and rub on people. But second of all, yeah, it especially sounds- they're just like, dude, it's almost lunchtime. I'm fucking hungry. Why are you making yeah. me rub all over this giant fat guy when I like really just want to <laughs> eat him? And they're utterly, I mean, they're not diseased, but they're just naturally, they're like, they're like a Komodo dragons. You know, they're Komodo dragons. They're naturally venomous. Just their spit. It's right. so full of bacteria that if they bite something, it dies. Snakes just naturally have this bacteria. How in the world is this sanitary for humans? First of all, I can't even imagine. I don't want penises rubbing all over my body, let alone a snake rubbing Not all over many. my body. Nothing's yeah. relaxing about that. I well, would be like. I just don't like snakes at all. So I know you don't. But can you imagine somebody going, hey, let's put your child, let your child down. Let's put some little baby boas on them. It'll relax them. Sounds like an episode of Fear Factor. I'm like, is there at least yes! a cash, is there a cash prize at the end of this? I mean, it's like, okay, well, we've decided that you're a really bad person. So we're going to make you endure snake massage for two hours. <laughs> it's like, no, oh thanks. God, just kill me. <laughs> I'll do the jail time if that's an option. Not to mention how expensive it is. My God, it's just crazy. But this woman, she's like, well, I had my calling, you know, when I was 18. I'm like, okay, you know, snakes talk to her. We get it. I wouldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't even want to interact with that human being on any level. Not me. And it does not sound therapeutic or relaxing. If you've done it, by all means, tell us. But I know there's no one. I know there's no one we know that has done snake therapy. Not that I would think so. And I'm not saying you can't have a pet snake. I mean, I never would in a gajillion years. When I hear people say, "Oh, I love bearded dragons" or "I love geckos" or whatever, I'm like, "Oh, that's fine. I don't. I don't want to do it. I don't want to know about it, and I don't want to do it. I don't get it. Right? It's not for me. But anyway, so you know, snake therapy is a way to go if you don't want to pop a Xanax. You buy. You go. Go, girl. Boy. No thanks. Whatever. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. no. Never. Anyway, those are the, I mean, there's all kinds. Uh, so many odd therapies require being naked, which I really don't get. Uh, yeah. I just noticed there was a lot of nude therapy and I'm like, you know, I just think that we're crossing into a sexual world. I don't necessarily think this is to relax you, but the only alternative therapy that I've thought about that would be fun is to do the sweat lodge. No. No. <laughs> Is there any alternative therapy therapy you would do besides Gosh. shrooms? I would do shrooms. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I just, I mean, I I thought about maybe going to a chiropractor, but I hear you have to like completely relax and like yeah. you know <laughs> hand yourself over to the doctor. And I'm like, well, that's impossible. I just, I know. And they're I like, if do you that, because if you don't, you could hurt yourself. And that's um, what I heard. So I'm just like, yes. well, that would explain that. And I'm like, maybe that's why chiropractors are so good looking because you're <clears> throat> just throat> like, ah, you know, and then yeah. like, I'm, I'm Dr. Spine crack or whatever, you know, and I went to uh, a chiro. Yeah, I went to a chiropractor once when I was like 18 or 19 years old and um, they were doing this therapy where they basically were doing electrolyte elect electrotherapy Mm -hmm. and so basically what happens is they wet this big rubber pad and they lay it down on you and you lay on it like on your stomach so you're on Mm -hmm. your stomach laying down on the the thing and then basically put like a little electrodes on your back and it kind of does a deep not massage but it kind of is like working on all the muscles in your spine area right and so i'm like all right and they're like okay just lay there you know we'll be back in like 15 minutes i'm like okay so i'm laying there so what do i do i try to like adjust like i lift my body up off the pad to like adjust and like the wave of electricity that went through my body because i got off the grounder was unbelievable and i went (laughs) okay that was a really bad idea you can electrocute yourself you don't realize how much electricity is going through you when you're until you you know are taking yourself off the ground so what did Um, you do what what'd you do what did I do? Like after that happened. Oh, well, first of all, I was like, ah! you know, because I'm like yeah. a whole stomach started to wobble. And so I was like, holy shit. And it did not feel good. I, it felt like literally felt like a giant wave of electricity was coming out of my stomach. And so I just got back down. I was like, oh, my God, that was really dangerous. I would have turned it off or unplugged it. I couldn't. Then- I couldn't. I, it was not near me. It was far away. So I was like kind of stuck there. But I mean, I guess I could have picked the ground up grounder up with me <laughs> and mood. But I, that was literally the last time I went. I was like, nah, this isn't for me. 
That's crazy. Yeah, it was not ideal. And so I wouldn't recommend it. If you're a control freak, I, it probably isn't a good idea to get up when you're in the middle of an electrode therapy uh, situation. So, yeah, I, not a recommend. I, I wouldn't um, think so. No. So anyway, I, I don't know. There's there's so many options that aren't legitimate that you have to be real. I mean, gosh, it's a lucrative area, though. I mean, you can make up anything. Yeah, it sounds like it. Make some money. I don't know. It I, sounds like it. I have heard that um, microdosing mushrooms is a really good idea for therapy. Hmm. Um, I would do it in a controlled environment, of course. But I, I've heard that it can really free your mind of anxiety. And so that would be great. I would love huh. to do that. So I don't know about you, but. Yeah, I don't know. I get weird about ingesting stuff that I don't know about. <laughs> so I don't know if we're really good candidates for therapy. Not those kinds, at least. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I would try pretty much. I mean, no, I would not. I wouldn't try pretty much anything. I think that's the the bottom line after doing all of our research. Apparently, back in the 60s, they were really into finding alternative therapies. Uh, a lot of it required nudity. And um, <laughs> yeah, what, it kind of died that? out. Yeah, what's all that about? I don't I know. I don't know. I think people are just kind of sick. Well, I think after a while, wanna... they're just like, you know, we're not liking what we're seeing here, man. So we're just going <laughs> to do something else. Very odd. Um, I don't know. I'm wondering if outdoor therapy would work for me. I mean, just being outside and I have to have a cabin, though. I can't be living on the ground, sleeping on the ground and shit. I just I couldn't no, do it. No nude beaches for you? No. Apparently, there's a nude beach in like Tahoe. Which yeah, I, I saw that. I didn't know. And I'm like, hmm. I don't want to do that, but it would be weird to, it'd be cool to see where it is, but well, I, guess I mean, it's you hidden. don't have to be nude, but I think you would be at a place if you had like a bathing suit on and everybody else was nude. Cause they'd be like, are you just here to be a perv? And you're like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You kind of got to let it go. At least take the top off. Right. Or, or like, know. you know, you have like one boob hanging out and you're like, that's all I'm willing to do. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Anything else? It's $200. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I am fairly free with my nakedness at home and my inner sanctum, but the, you know, people who are free, really free, um, I don't know if I envy it or just don't even think about it being an option for me personally, I'm but not, you know, I don't feel all that free. I was looking in the mirror the other day and I'm just like, I think my boobs are starting to sag. Cause I was like, <gasps> you know, holding from the, my nipple to my clavicle. And I was just like, that's, that's definitely a good, like, I don't know <laughs> how many inches are supposed to be the between there. And I was thinking this to myself and I'm just like, I think it's too long. And so <laughs> I always think the day that I can put a beer can under there and it stays is the day that I need to think about a lift. Well, because. and then I started lifting them, and I'm like, see, if they were just like this, then maybe. Mm-hmm. But then that's when I start, like, stretching and contorting my whole body. And then, like, I've done that before where I stretched my whole face, like, and I'm just like, Olivia, I'm like, if I look like this, <laughs> and yeah. and I'm just like, would, would I look like younger? And she just looks at me, she's like, I don't know, mom. She's like, that's weird. And she's like, because like, I have all my fingers stretched out, and I'm like, you know, dog from space, dog from space. <laughs> you would look very surprised for a long time. Yeah. But I was just like, you know. You know, I've got every, you know, wrinkled spot stretched, but my face is just like, ah! yeah, <laughs> so. I, you know, I really, I really think about doing work and I really believe that we all just need to go together and get some fillers to see how we feel about the whole process. I'm just afraid just... that if, if we don't do that, we're not going to really know if, you know, these little baby facelifts and stuff are, are worth it. I would love to have full plastic surgery, but I just, I'm kind of afraid. Because what if you die? Oh, why, why would you die? Surgery. I mean, if you had, you know, like the full mommy makeover that people have, I just, See, I don't know. I don't think I need that, but I think mm-hmm. I would just, I definitely need like neck to scalp or whatever you know something going on there or like a lumbotomy and head <laughs> remove like just put a new head on me maybe with a smarter brain a healthier You're one smart I, you know i don't know stephanie was making fun of me because i've agreed to get some tattoos with my children and she thinks that oh. i can't take it 
She's like, you're not going to be able to do it. I'm like, we've been talking about getting tattoos as Uggs for, for years. Sake. She's the tattoo the size of like a, a stick. That's what she said. Shoulder. She goes, I've had one and it was a lot. And I was because she was really tiny then. And okay, so they. But Stephanie has like zero pain tolerance. I too. know. And I said, I don't think you I think you're underestimating what I can go through. And she goes, you have to be practically drugged up to go to the dentist. I'm like, OK, well, the dentist is not fair. No. That is different. <laughs> I don't think anybody's underestimating what you can go through. You have just about as low pain tolerance as she does. So, <laughs> well, it's like I got a tattoo. Where it's right here. It's this dot. Like, it's oh. this dot. See, I'll be like Phoebe from Friends. It's right here. Yeah. See, it means so much my, to me. It's on my hip. <laughs> it means a lot to me, you guys. This dot means everything. It, it's it's all of the family represented in this little dot. God. That'll be my tattoo. I know. Okay, so let's do some ugly and awkward moments of the week. stretched out for a whole week and a half because Mm. it was so embarrassing that I couldn't even admit what it was. Oh my God. Spill. um, I was sleeping and I woke up and I was screaming at the top of my lungs. Oh. And Victor and Ryan came running into the (gasps) living room because they were, because they heard me screaming and they're just like, what the heck, you know? And Ryan was terrified, and Victor's like, what is wrong? And I'm like, what? And they're like, you were just screaming bloody murder at the top of your lungs. And they're like, what were you dreaming about? And I knew exactly what I was dreaming about. And I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm like, it's it's not a big deal. I'm like, I, I don't really want to talk about it. And then he's just like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. And and I knew exactly what it was. And oh, so a couple days later... He's like, are you ready to tell me what you were dreaming about the other day? And I just started laughing. And I'm like, no. I'm like, no, I, I can't. I can't. Why was like, everybody well, so dying to know? Because it was well, such a dramatic. He says it was like a blood curdling scream. And oh, my, so, in your I sleep. Mean, That's pretty. Ryan came bolting out of his room because he just was like, it was scary, he said. Yeah. And so finally, it had been about a week and a half. And I said, all right. I said, I think I'm ready to tell you what the dream was oh about. Tell me. He's like, all right. And I said, well, I'm like, I was with Olivia's Girl Scouts and <laughs> I said they were doing this fashion show and they were on a runway, you know, doing their little outfits and things like that. And they brought everything, but they forgot all the shoes. And so okay. <laughs> I said, for whatever reason, I had like my shoes there. I said, but I had like a big wall rack. Of just all these really nice expensive shoes, like you know, uh, Manolo Blahniks, uh, Christian Louboutins, mm-hmm. um, you know, just like all these really nice name brands. Sure. And so I said, they're like, well, can we borrow your shoes? Because, like I said, it was, it was like a wall, and there was like a hundred pairs on there. And so I, I was just like, well, um, I said, okay. I said it's just to the end of the runway and back, right? And so I'm like, how much damage can they do? I mean, it, right? It's, it's not that bad. So I let them borrow a pair each, you know, to go down the runway, show whatever they were showing and bring them back. Well, as the shoes started coming back and going back on the shoe rack, they were coming back like dusty, dirty, broken, scuffed, you know, like separating from the shoes and from the heel, um, putting little buffers on them. And I was just like, as the shoes came back, I was just like, (gasps) I'm like, what, what, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> and then like after a while, I was just like, they're, they're all rude. And then I just like, I lost it. And I was like, ah! and I started screaming at the top of my lungs because oh, no. all my shoes were ruined. And that, that was the scream of bloody murder because my you shoes. You were so traumatized by their shoe like, damage. I, I was just like screaming at the top of my lungs out of frustration because my shoes were just destroyed by oh. these the Girl Scouts that were borrowing them. <laughs> and so that was this, this, that was the scream. And they're just like, we've never heard you scream like that before. And I've had some pretty nasty dreams. Yeah. But it was the shoes. <laughs> so that is just, so interesting and so he's like you screamed at the top of your lungs because they ruined your shoes i'm like i did i did that is so funny i'm sure it's all symbolic of something but i mean first of all 
they were treasures to you and you love shoes you love i mean i do you love them more than me and i love shoes you right. really love shoes and so you, they make you feel feminine and sexy that's why you love them and so having these people destroy your sexuality and your femininity is probably well, I mean, really a bunch upsetting. Of 12 year olds i'm just like you assholes <laughs> so like, you have no appreciation for fine things it's true they don't <laughs> god so that's pretty awkward paula i it was so du- <laughs> well it was just what was awkward is i just refused to ad- tell anybody what the dream was for like a week and a half because well, yeah because like, you're like i'm ashamed i'm just like i can't i can't tell anyone this a- it's ever. not like you were murdering somebody even it was <laughs> that's really funny yeah it was all right well mine is a um mine actually involves daryl because um it was and it was really i mean awkward um so we were like i said we were in the car uh on our way to pick up my car so that my son could pick up his car at the dealership it was a whole thing which i absolutely hate shit like that and so we're in the truck and he has you know this really fancy thing where he can like press buttons and talk and people can call and he can just press a button and you know it's like space age technology Mm -hmm. in his truck so it was after hours. It's not like he was working anymore or anything like that, but a client called. And <laughs> so I said, oh, who's that? And he's like, oh, he, he goes, oh, he's just a client. And he, you know, he talks a long time and he goes, and I don't have time to talk to this fool. And I'm like, yeah, I don't blame you. He had answered the phone. Oh, no. And I was like, hello. <laughs> and so and then Daryl hangs up the phone and he's like, he go, and I go, do you think he heard? And he's like. No, 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 no. I don't think he heard. He called right back. Right Wait, back. Why did he answer then? He 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 accidentally answered instead of just putting him to voicemail. Oh, okay. And so when I saw it clicking, the time clicking on the giant screen in his truck, I was like, hello? <laughs> and so... Oh. Daryl hung up on him. He called right back. He's like, hey, yeah. Uh, hey, Jim, I can't really talk to you right now. And da, 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 da. So he hung up and I go, do you think he heard us? <laughs> like, of it was so he awkward. He says he did it. And I'm like, you called him a fool. And I was like, yeah, you don't need to talk to him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. But he called him back anyway. And he never mentioned that he heard or anything. But you just never know. I mean, that is just, I've never... I can't imagine. I would love for someone to accidentally not hang up and hear them talking shit about me, but it never has happened. You know, I mean, but it- I've had someone butt dial me before, but and why is it that you try and scream in the phone so loud? You're like, <laughs> Jamie, like, I can't you know, hear you. Like you think they're gonna hear you somehow. It's like, honey, I shrunk the kids, and you're like swimming in a Cheerio, <laughs> yes, and you think somehow they're is. gonna hear you, Don't but eat they me, never Dad. do. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It's so true. But anyway, anyways. it was really funny. I mean, I thought it was hilarious, but then that again, is it's not. Funny. It's not my client, but I mean, still, it was true. scary. It like was it still was- awkward and very like, oh shit, you know. You just nobody wants to do that to another person on purpose. Yeah. So anyway, so, that was it. All right. Well, anyway. thanks everybody for joining us this week. Uh, yes. Hope you guys are. Uh, everyone's staying out of danger and out of fires and yes. whatever else is going the heat that's continuing on and the monsoons tornadoes and everything all the uh badness so um everyone stay safe please no matter what conditions you're living in right now mm-hmm. they all sound pretty lousy so uh, uh other than that have a fabulous rest of your weekend and we'll see you on thursday bye